Hello everybody and welcome back to your favourite FIFA series on YouTube, it's Beer Goalkeeper episode 47. And we have officially gone and done it, 1000 subscribers on YouTube. <laughs> and I can't thank you all enough, I appreciate all the support so much, it's amazing, I cannot believe we've made it this far and we've still got so much further to go. So if you have been enjoying this series, don't forget to subscribe and leave a like, it really does help out the channel. But for now, let's get on with the video. So we have some bad news. Last episode, I noticed Odegaard wasn't playing and Arsenal have gone and sold him. I cannot believe they have done this. It's a ridiculous thing to do. He was a star player last season and they also got rid of Gakpo, another star player. They have ruined this team. We had a nice little squad starting to be built and then they sold two of the star players. So other players are going to have to step up big time. But anyway, we will move on to the first game, which is against Southampton, away from home. And the first opportunity comes to us in the 17th minute is Lekonga, one of my favourite names to pronounce. I don't know why, it's just fun to say. But he scores, curling it round the keeper. Could be his first goal of the season, possibly. Maybe the first goal I've ever seen him score. It's a decent enough finish, but we worked the ball very well through the midfield. Quick pass in one twosies, and look at the finish. Curls it round the keeper. Keeper should be saving this one. It's not too far away from him. There's not enough power behind the shot either. Just gets a little finish to it can't get his hands out quick enough to stop it but being the lead is great for us 1-0 just before half time we get our second goal this time it's the main man Ozerman stepping up you're never gonna catch me you're wasting your time this time it's Lekonga with the assist great passing once again playing through Southampton like they're not even there look at the space Ozerman has and you cannot give him that type of space he drills us past the keeper he has no chance the power is too much for him 2-0 already and that is where the first half ends and Southampton haven't even had a shot on goal yet. It's ridiculous how well we are playing. They finally get an opportunity but we cut this one out. I dish the ball up to Osman who heads it down to Smith Rowe, plays it out wide to Puedo I believe. Look at this passing. Smith Rowe is in the box. I pass it to Osman who gets a strike, makes it 3-0. That's his second goal of the game. That is a beautiful team goal starting off with me. Osman does really well to head it down to Smith Rowe. Then he continues his run and the ball from Puedo is perfect. Perfect. And the ball across from Smith Rowe to Osman doesn't even have to move on the volley. It's a beautiful strike just past the keeper's fingertips. He actually shins it past the keeper, so it's not a beautiful strike, but a goal is a goal, and that is where the game ends. 3 0. And you can see Southampton had one shot which got blocked, so I had nothing to do the whole game. Just sat there twiddling my thumbs, but I will take it. Easy game is a good game for me. The next game is a Carabao Cup game, round of four against Crystal Palace, away from home once more, and Crystal Palace started off this game so quick. Seven minutes in, and Lucas Moura from Tottenham with a power strike, I'm lucky it's straight at me, I get my hands up quick, they push it over the bar, but Crystal Palace have turned into a beast of a team, and look at this, nine minutes in, they get another opportunity, this time at the near post by Ronnie Lopez, but I get down quick enough to push this one out wide for another corner. I'm not sure how much more of this pressure we can take, our defence is letting me down too much at the moment, I'm the last line of the defence, and once again, 14 minutes in, and this time Lucas Moura does manage to score against me. Crystal Pass deserved this goal, they have played around us, easy as you like, we have had no chance, not even near the ball, this goal was from that corner for my great save, they just play around us like we're not even there though, it's not good enough we are not closing them down they have the time and space to pass the ball as much as they like and who is marking more there Kanate just leaves him and he just finesses it past me maybe I should be doing a load better I feel like I had the angles covered but I get across raise my hand too quickly it just goes underneath my elbow but this is not good enough from us now Ozerman one of the keeper but he strikes the ball so early why is he hitting it so quick he had time just to get into the box and finish this one but he does not he panicked didn't have any composure there but finally we are on the attack it's good to see and Smith Rowe hits this one straight out of the keeper anywhere else on goal and we have tied this game up but he does not hit it as hard as he can but straight at the keeper he does a good job of making his body wide and getting the ball out for another corner we had so many corners in this episode and once again why is Smith Rowe hitting this ball from so far out we are just taking too many shots from so far out so we're 1-0 down at half time we need to slow down a little bit play the ball around Make sure we can break the defence instead of shooting wide. And this is what we do here. I don't know why the pass back from Smith Rowe, but we keep the ball going. And Lekonga gets a second goal of the episode two minutes after the half. And we have finally shown what we are good at. Passing the ball around the midfield and the defence. Bringing them out, luring them away, making some space. But I don't know why Smith Rowe did the 1-2 there. But I think it's Pueda does a good job of getting up quick enough and keeping the ball moving. And Lekonga, the space opens up nicely for him. 
right footed into the side netting great goal and since the Crystal Palace goal we have been all over them making a few opportunities but we need to finish one more to win this game this time Smith Rowe holds the ball up very well across comes the header I don't know if it's Pawey that once more he does very well to hold the ball up again keeper makes a fantastic save now we're into added time last minute of the game it's a paddle with a diving head and once again the keeper makes a fantastic save widens up his body nicely and blocks the ball with his arm I think on the arm Lucky the defender hits the ball back off the battle and out for a corner. We have just been mobbing them at the end of this game. One more opportunity. Pueda hits it straight at the keeper and this one is going to penalties. We've not had a penalty shootout in so long. Crystal Palace with the first one. He goes to the left. I go right. 1-0 to Palace. This time it's Puedo stepping up. Hits it against the crossbar. We are losing now. 1-0. Now it's Mora. His time to shine. He copies Pereira, this time hits the post, I died the wrong way once more, Zapata doesn't have a very good run of form with penalties at this time, top corner, ties the game up, now we're all even, it's Eze with his penalty, I go right, he goes left and he hits it straight over, now Smith Road to put us into the lead, and he copies Eze with exactly the same penalty, now for a left footer, I decide to change my mind, I go left, he goes right, I cannot predict these players at the moment, very poor for me, not saving one, Shaka this time, just gets very lucky, hits it down the middle, keeper just can't get his hands up quick enough. Hughes now stepping up, left footer, I finally make a good save and give us an opportunity to win this game. This is it, it's Garotto, our centre-back with the winning penalty if he scores. Number two steps up and he has no doubt in his mind, it's a beauty. Keeper left in no man's land, in the middle of the goal, everyone charging out to Garotto. We finally end this game, it was a long one, I'm so glad we didn't have extra time. I believe that is our first penalty shootout with Arsenal and to get the win, I am so happy. I didn't perform to the best of my ability, but one save. It's okay, but this penalty, look at the composure from the centre-back. All the pressure on his shoulders. He does not break. He performs to the best of his ability. Hits it into the side net and keeper had no chance. And that's how we end that game. Five shots against three saves, only one goal. But look at this performance from their goalkeeper. He was on absolute fire. And now we have to go into the Premier League against Norwich. At home this time, it's good to be back at the Emirates Stadium. And this is a big game for us. Norwich are 18th in the league at the moment. And we need some points to catch up with United, who are like 11 ahead of us, which is very far away. But once again, whenever we play a team, doesn't matter where they are, their keeper is on top form always. And this keeper is on fire already. Two big saves within 10 minutes. And this one is a good one. Gets down low, pushes out strong with his left hand. And we're just all over him already. And look at him. He's like Spider-Man in that goal. Making save after save. Frustrating us beyond belief. I cannot believe how good he is. Look at him. Just flings himself at everything. Another good hand. Maybe he's left-handed. Because every save is with his left one. Now into 22nd minute. And finally Ozerman can beat the brick wall at the back. It's a good strike as left foot. Not the best one he's had against him. But he fumbles the bag here. Smith Rowe with the assist here. Trying to fill Odegaard's boots. Which he's doing okay at. But look at this strike. It curls away just inside the post and I don't know why this keeper hasn't saved this one he's been unstoppable making all these saves it comes out then in hits the post and that is where we stand 1-0 and look at another save why are we shooting from so far out this dude is unbelievable at the moment we need to get in the box and make some good opportunities these ones just seem wasted at the moment this is a carbon copy of the one from earlier and he's just making save after save finally again Ozerman can beat him he is beatable and once again, it's a finesse that beats him. If you shoot with power, he will save it. If you put a little finesse on it, he cannot. He has no chance here. All the space on that right side of the goal. And Osman just curls it around the keeper. He's in no man's land. Defender tries to take a knee while trying to defend this one. Does not do it. And we get one more opportunity in the 45th minute. Osman with a long range strike. And he doesn't score. Obviously not. And then Norwich had one which went wide and that is where the first half ends. So much has happened but 2-0 is the score to us just after half time. Norwich make an opportunity here. Look at this body and look at this goal. It's a crack and I have no chance. The camera angle does kind of stuff me a little bit. I couldn't see the ball until very late. I do my best to try getting out and saving this one. But look at the technique on the chest. Then just wellies it straight past me. I make a futile dive for it but it's not good enough. But look at the technique, it's just beautiful. 
cracks it just underneath Garotto's arm, I believe, into the side netting. And Norwich only one goal away from tying this up, and they are on fire. They are pushing us to our limit. They get another opportunity this time. I charge out, block it beautifully, chuck my body on the line, <laughs> take a ball straight to the gut, wind myself a little bit. Now, I don't tend to show you goal kicks because I do tend to play them short, but this time I decide to hoof it up the pitch, and we win the header there. Norwich defender makes a mistake with a bad touch. Paredo pounced from now he's charging through to the keeper. One on one, no can keep up from, and he finishes this one off, making it three. 3-1. Maybe this could put an end to this game. I don't think Norwich have got the ability to get back into this one, but it's a fantastic finish after just charging through. Look at the pace of him. He's got burners for days, and the finish as well. The composure after running that far hits it into the side net, and the keeper had no chance. The composure is unbelievable. I'm starting to think I should just hoof these balls up the pitch more often other than playing short, but now, six minutes left of this game. It's a deep played ball into the far post. We get the header, and it's actually given as a penalty. This this one is very soft. A Villa with the handball wasn't even looking at the ball. It's a very harsh decision. I get subbed off. One save against six shots. A lot of blocks. And Muriel this time stepping up for this penalty. He missed the last one. And there we go. He gets his goal. 4-1. This game is all but over now. I don't think Norwich can get three goals within like the last five minutes. But this penalty is a beauty. Left-sided. Top corner. Keeper once again in the middle of the goal. Doing a little stanky leg. And hopefully that will give Muriel more confidence. Because he has not been performing very well at all. He doesn't get very many opportunities. And that is how the game ended. 4-1. It's a pretty close game. We had far more shots than Norwich did. And now the last game of the episode. It's been a long one today. Manchester United at Old Trafford. One of my favourite stadiums in the world. Obviously I support Manchester United. But I hope we can beat them here. And look at what Ozzyman pulls out of the bag. It's a belter. De Gea had no chance. I was so shocked that he would even attempt this one. It really is a goal out of nothing. You can see in the middle of the frame here, he walks off the midfield and just belts it as quick as he could. And look at the power. De Gea is just reaching for the stars because he's not going to get this ball at all. It's an early goal and United have a lot of time to get back into this game. They're top of the league for a reason. We need to be on the best form of our life and we'd concede straight away after. This time it's Griezmann. He absolutely wellies this one. It's really not what you want. We've just scored a beautiful goal and we let them just walk through the midfield and the defenders don't close them down quick enough. He has time to strike this one and the power just beats me. I do my best effort but it's not good enough. I look like a fool just sliding across the floor. I think this might be the only game that I will happily take a draw and that is how the First half ends 1-1. There's still so much time left. I'm a nervous boy at this one. But five minutes into the second half and look what Lekonga pulls out the bag. What is going on here? That's a belt, a little scissor kick. I think as Smith Rowe hits the ball so hard against the post, no one is marking Lekonga and he just pulls this one out. He doesn't want to do an easy header. He wants to do a spectacular scissor kick, bicycle kick, whatever you want to call it. But the technique is unbelievable. Gets up so high and to finish this one, it is beautiful. But we all know United are not going to take this one lying down. It's saw with the effort. It's another spectacular save for myself. I made a few good ones this time. That ball is moving all over the place and look at him on the attack again. This time Grimaldo at the near post and I saved one I saved the near post shot miracles happen every time it happens I'm shocked but it's a good save get my hand up quick push it out for a corner but this pressure from United is getting unbearable they only attack once more and this time they get given a penalty for a handball Canate puts his hands up there's no need for it it's probably gonna get given a handball all day long and it is Bruno stepping up to take the penalty. I hope I can save this one, but I cannot. It's a beautiful one. Top corner. Even if I went the right way, I don't believe I would have even saved it. Every time I thought we had this game under some sort of control, United just put us under so much pressure. This constant attack tires out our defence and the midfield. They get a penalty. It's a bit harsh, but it is probably a handball. He does lift his hands up, stops the cross coming in, and Bruno is always going to score a penalty. We know this one. Now they get a free kick. It's Bruno once more. This time he hits the post. It's Ronaldo-esque technique. The run-up hits it. No movement, just up and down, straight as an arrow. I'm nowhere near this one. Top corner, it would have been. I clatter into the post for good measure as well.
Moving on to the last minutes of this game, we have the opportunity to win this one as Ozerman, but De Gea makes a fantastic save, drills it low, but he cannot score, and that is where the game ends 2-2. I will take a draw, I think we had the opportunity to win it, but a draw is a draw and we'll get the extra point. And that is it for today's episode, I hope you did enjoy, if you did, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and as always, look after yourself, stay safe, and I will speak to you next time. Goodbye.